Aujourd'hui, on va parler du niveau C2 en anglais, comment je l'ai personnellement atteint et des conseils pour que vous puissiez en faire de même. Cette vidéo sera principalement en anglais et à la fin, on va revoir mon conseil numéro 1 pour atteindre le niveau C2. Alright, let's go If you're watching this video, you're probably learning English yourself. Maybe you reach level B1 or C1 and you want to take it to the next level. You hear a lot of people talking about level C2, but how do you get there? It's pretty difficult, right? So before I give you some of my personal tips and how I got to level C2 in a few years, and we'll review how long that took me to get there, we'll talk about two kinds of people. The first kind will say that it's impossible. It's impossible for a French person to reach this level. They think it's too hard. And, you know, I found this often online when I say, oh, I've got level C2, I can help you. And people just don't believe you and they don't want to take my advice. Don't be that person. The second type of people are people who underestimate the task. It's very difficult to get to that level and you need to put the work. It's going to take many, many hours. Um, it's probably going to take you a few years of hard work to get there. You might need to move to another country. There's lots of things you might need to do. So don't underestimate it, but don't think it's impossible because you still can get there. Okay, so one question you need to ask yourself before you start learning and trying to get C2. Do you really need to get there? Do you really need to get the level C2 to really master the language? Think of that language as your own. It's almost as if you had that language to begin with. You were born with it. You don't make any effort. You don't need to think at all. Um, do you need to get there for what you want? Maybe you just want to get a job um, in another country. You probably don't need to aim that, at, that, that high, even though I really like the ambition. But do you really need to aim for C2? Because the, the things you are going to learn are going to be completely different than just trying to have conversations or writing emails and so on and so forth. So before you start doing that, ask yourself, do I need to get C2 or maybe C1 with, you know, a good accent is going to be enough because, you know, learning th C2 is going to be about the grammar is going to be about, you know, reading complex texts being able to analyze, do those kind of things. Whereas having a normal job where you have level C1, it's often, you know, more than enough. If we compare what the um, government is saying about C1 and C2, C1 seems pretty good. So C1 says, comprendre des textes longs et exigeants et saisir des signi significations implicites. S'exprimer spontanément et couramment sans trop devoir chercher ces mots. That's pretty good. Utiliser la langue de façon efficace et souple dans la vie sociale, professionnelle ou académique. So even at uni, C1 is enough. S'exprimer sur des sujets complexes de façon claire et bien structurée et manifester son contrôle des outils linguistiques d'organisation, d'articulation et de cohésion du discours. So that's for level C1, right? And I'll talk about how long it took me to get there. I think it took me three years on and off um, in 2000. 15, I had a test, the IELTS, and I got C1. But let's look at C2, right, which is the level after it, the niveau maîtrise. Donc, comprendre sans effort pratiquement tout ce qui est lu ou entendu. Pouvoir restituer des faits et des arguments issus de diverses sources écrites et orales en les résumant de façon cohérente. S'exprimer spontanément, très couramment, de façon précise et rendre et rendre distinct de fines nuances de sens en rapport avec des sujets complexes. And to be honest, I think that's more about how much you practice if you go into the country, um, if you read, if you watch a lot of TV, for example, if you watch the BBC, they'll say some stuff that is just idiomatic. You don't need to be good at English to, lo to know it. You just need to practice it. You know, you hear some special expressions that you never heard before, those kind of things. That's part of the C2 package, I think. So if you try to learn it, C1 is really good already. Don't think if you don't get to C2, it's really bad. It's not, it's really good. So you're still very motivated. You want to get to level C2. How do you get there? I'll tell you about my story and how I got from zero to C2. I started learning English when I was 18. Um, I left my baccalauréat professionnel in France and I started to do an English degree in Strasbourg my hometown. 
when that happened, I had to learn a lot of things. I went from zero, but the first three things I focused on was, you know, the accent. Well, in order would be the vocab, the grammar, and then the accent, right? And for that first year, I really tried to learn as much as possible. I went on a linguistic exchange. I went to London for two months during the summer. And then I came back and tried to pick on the degree. Then obviously now I have a degree in English, but I, what I would say is really try to learn as much vocab as possible. Don't let any word that you don't know just sleep out. Write all of them down, learn all of them. That really helped me to skyrocket really, really fast. When you will learn 3000 words, you'll start to be pretty good. And then, you know, you can just memorize them without writing them down. So I went from zero to C1 in three years, right? I did my fir the first year of my English degree, which I failed dramatically. Then the, f the second first year, which I was all right. And then the second year. Um, and at that point I passed the IELTS, which is the you know British Council language test. And I got C1 there. Um, and then after that, which really took me to the next level. And if you want to get to C2, I think you have no choice. I did an, an Erasmus exchange in Birmingham. So I went there for one year right and I you know you, you're able to practice you learn much much faster than if you're just in France and that's one of the key things in France we don't really practice if you speak English people think you know you're kind of weird um, so yeah going to the country there's nothing that can beat that that was my first experience of a long time in England and to be honest that was you know the, the time I learned the most even though I was pretty advanced already but I still wasn't at the level C2, even after doing an English degree, a uh, degree in literature, linguistics, all of that, and going to the UK for one year, I was still under level C2. I don't think I was very far from it, but I didn't have that level yet. So what did I do afterwards? I went to the University of York, I did a master's degree, I stayed two more years there. And the key difference there is that obviously I wasn't making any mistakes anymore. Um, before that, my grammar was good. My pronunciation was almost the same than now. But the key difference that took me to C2 was to be able to interact with a lot of different people from the UK, right? Those kind of people who were using different kinds of English, some expressions that you might not find if you just read certain kind of books. For example, I read a lot of non-fiction. Even if you read fictions, you would not find those kind of, kind of expressions. And that will stop you from, you know, understanding the news or so on and so forth. C'est comme en français, quand on regarde des fois la télé, il y a beaucoup d'expressions. On se dit pas comment est-ce qu'un étranger comprendrait ça. C'est une expression idiomatique. Mais euh, y a, de l'autre côté, il y a des étrangers qui comprennent pas, qui doivent les apprendre. So my time in York was really crucial to learn all of these and that took me to the next level as well. So how long did it take me really? So if I were to count, um, there was one year of getting ready for university, then three years of having my English degree, then two more years, right, of um, doing my master's degree. I think I reached, C I reached C1 around here and I reached C2 run here. So it took me five years of learning, right? It doesn't mean you need to put five years in there. You might learn it quicker if that's your on the objective. But keep in mind that, you know, there is a lot of work required to reach that level. Not that many people have it. And as you can tell, it's probably, you know, something that you need to dedicate a lot of effort. You probably need to go to the country. All right, but again, not impossible. Let me give you five tips that will help you reach your next level in English. First tip is to learn every single word you come across, every single word you don't understand, every single sentence or, you know, expression you don't really get. Write it down and learn it. Learn it by heart and make sure you are able to use it in a sentence yourself. Tip number two that really applies especially for French people and French speaking um, individuals is to not only learn the vocab and when I say that not only learn the written word but also the phonetics of it. So that means you need to learn the phonetic alphabet, how to pronounce it, how to write it and every time you learn a word next to it you write your French translation so that you learn the meaning but crucially you also write how to pronounce it. 
that's what I did and that's why I can speak like this. I know exactly how the words are meant to sound. Number three, again, a tip that's very important for French people because we don't speak enough even when we're learning at school is to practice as much as possible. You know, if you if you live in France right now and fair enough, it's the COVID crisis, try to find cafes that speak in English, right? Multilingual places where you'll be able to learn and practice your skills. You will put into practice a lot of what you learn. It's going to motivate you and you will learn much, much faster. If you can't do that, if you don't have anyone to speak to in your town, find someone online or even better, try to get um, some months abroad. Try to go to Australia, try to go to the UK or the US. Try to get those few months that will really, really make a difference for you. Tip number four, that's your grammar. And the reason I'm talking about grammar only now, it's because I believe that people should first learn how to understand and say some words before they go into the more boring stuff that will take a long time to learn. I would advise you strongly to take some pieces of articles or even books once every, every week and analyze their sentences. Ask yourself, how is that done? Am I making mistakes there? And what's the rule behind it? Once you get most of the rules on how to write English correctly, it will be much easier for you to do so. Tip number five, and this is really my golden tip. I give this tip to my family and to my friends because I think that's what helped me the most. Helped me more than my work on learning the vocab, learning anything to really be fluent and be enabled to speak like now. And that tip is to always think in English. Try to always think in the language you are trying to learn. For example, if right now I am thinking to myself in French, j'aimerais vraiment aller m'acheter une glace. Well, try to make that sentence the same one in English in your head. Try to say, I really would like to buy an ice cream right now. If you can't do that, go and look up the words that you couldn't say because you didn't know the vocab. So for example, in that instance, let's say you didn't know how to say ice cream, you go into your dictionary, you look, at, you look up ice cream in English, you find out it's ice cream, and then you make the sentence in your head. Try to do that all the time, as much as you can. When you find words or sentences that you can't do, write them down and learn it. This is an easy way for you to practice anytime and to learn vocab that really belongs to you. That's vocab that's really useful because you were using it anyway in your, in your normal French language. That will also help you to make sentences that really belong to you as well. Sentences that you typically use in French that you want to make in English. And by learning those will make you way more fluent. Let's recap. So first, you need to know that learning English up to level C2 is not impossible. Many people do it. But it's also not easy, right? It's not going to take you a few weeks to get there. Then you need to ask yourself, do you really need to reach that level or can you do with another level such as C1, which is also really good? If you still want to get to C2, that's awesome. There are a number of things you can do. The best one that I would advise is my golden tip of trying to always think in English. And when you get blocked, look it up and learn what blocked you. If it's vocab, if it's a grammatical sentence or if it's pronunciation, look it up. And in that case, you will be always practicing your language. Also, don't forget, learning a language never stops. I learn every day, maybe not vocab, but I learn something new pretty much every day. You will not stop learning by just reaching C2, but you will have a good understanding and you'll be able to speak as you want. If you want to receive my free PDF with my story on how I got to that level, my schedule and how I would advise you to learn, put a comment down below and I will send you that PDF. If you enjoy the content, make sure to subscribe. There will be way more videos about English, about how to live in the UK, how to get a job there. There will be videos in English and in French. Donc si vous avez aimé la vidéo, n'hésitez pas à me laisser un commentaire un pouce bleu et aussi vous abonner pour d'autres vidéos. Certaines vidéos seront 100% en français, certaines seront 100% en anglais et certaines seront un mix des deux. Ça dépend, mais dites-moi ce que vous préférez dans les commentaires.
Tschüss.